Now, I don't need to tell anyone in this room how devastating this unprecedented public crisis, public health crisis has been for folks here in the state. We know that prescription and heroin are claiming the lives of four people a day in Massachusetts. I won't ask for a show of hands in this room, but I have been in enough rooms to know that if I did, just about every hand would go up if I asked, do you know someone directly or indirectly who has been dealing with this disease? As a state, we've begun tackling this crisis from a number of angles, and I just want to uh, first of all, acknowledge Secretary Mary Lou Sutters, the hardest working person in state government who really has been on the forefront of a lot of change. An incredibly difficult job uh, to be the Secretary of, of Health and Human Services in the state, particularly at this time. And it has been uh, just terrific to have your leadership, uh, Mary Lou, on so many issues just this week, um, working with the legislature. In, in making sure that we're no longer sending to women uh, to Framingham State Prison for treatment that they weren't receiving, uh, that they desperately needed. And you know, on so many fronts, you and your team have really led, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate the governor's uh, leadership as well. I also want to thank uh, our colleagues in the legislature, there are so many here, Bob, thank you, thank you so much for acknowledging everybody, because I'd get myself in trouble if that had been left to me. Oh, well, that's all right, you can handle that. It won't be the first time. Um, <laughs> folks in the legislature, I know so many of you have been dealing with this. You see it, you live it, you breathe it in your districts, and I really appreciate all that you've uh, worked with us on to, uh, to address this issue. I know we've got the legislation uh, uh, working out right now, and, uh, and it's so desperately needed. And thank you for your care and attention uh, to, to that issue as well. Now look, some of the things we're, we're talking about when it comes to this crisis, I know you know that it's important we get after this from multiple angles. We're looking to make treatment more available to those struggling with addiction, and we're educating young people especially about the dangers of these drugs. Police and law enforcement are focused on getting people into treatment not to jail. And I want to especially acknowledge, because I saw him earlier, Chief Fred Ryan from Arlington. Great example, great example, Chief, where when it comes to overdoses, the chief and his team are sending out social workers on these overdoses so that there's an effort and an attempt made at intervention. And we've seen the Gloucester model, and we've seen that replicated in other communities. And that is the shift in the mentality and the approach in, in law enforcement. And I, and I applaud that. And speaking of law enforcement and first responders, um, earlier this year, my office entered into a landmark agreement with the maker of Narcan so that we can get Narcan, life-saving medication, in more hands of, of more first responders across the state at a cost-effective price. But look, here is where we need to have an honest conversation. And I know this group is up for that. I fundamentally believe that we cannot address this crisis without addressing the culture of prescribing uh, of, of prescription opioids in this state and across this country. Now, why do I say this? Look, you know the statistics. You've heard me talk about the statistics. The fact that the United States is 5% of the world's population, yet we consume 80% of the world's opioid supply. The fact that right now here in Massachusetts, four out of five heroin users started with an addiction to prescription drugs. We still prescribe enough opioids in the state for every adult to have a bottle. Here's something you may not know, um, because it isn't talked about. Heroin is absolutely devastating. It is killing people. It is so sad. It is ravaging families and communities across this state. But I want you to know that last year in Massachusetts, more people died from pill overdoses than died from heroin. More people died from pill overdoses than from heroin, and the rate of opioid-related deaths has increased and remains higher than the rate of increase for heroin deaths over the last three years. We have a serious problem. This is an unsustainable situation. We need strong action, and we need it now. So what do we do about it? Now look, I've called for much stronger prescribing guidelines for doctors. I see Dr. Dimitri here today, uh, and I appreciate the efforts of the Mass Medical Society um, who are in the business of helping people and helping patients. And that's the kind of collaboration and partnership this is going to take. What is it that we need to do to get ourselves to a safer place with this? It's why I support the governor's bill that would set stricter limits on prescribing and dispensing practices. It's why I joined 
with 30 other attorneys generals to limit the CDC's effort to release, uh, to support, I should say, not limit in any sense of the word, the uh, Centers for D Disease Control's efforts to set um, uh, safe prescribing guidelines. Now look, I know there has been some pushback against some of this, uh, particularly with respect to, to guidelines and prescribing practices and some concern. And I am happy to hear concerns uh, about that. But my view fundamentally remains that if we're going to solve this crisis, the time for action is now and we need to come together. Other countries have figured out how to manage pain without releasing a flood of uh, addictive and, and, and dangerous drugs into the communities. We need to do the same because if we allow the status quo to continue, addiction's going to continue and deaths are going to continue. But as I said, this is about a conversation, and I look forward to a conversation and a partnership with all of you on the issues that we can work together on, like the education of young people. I ask for your help in, uh, in enabling us to achieve that. On the ideas that you have, innovations and ideas about how we can combat addiction, how we can prevent disease from, from setting in, I ask for your help on all of that. I know these issues are going to be difficult. I hope you'll keep an open mind. I know that we will because to truly put an end to this epidemic, we're gonna need to work together, we're gonna need your help, and as I say, there are no greater collection of minds uh, and energies than, than those in this room and the organizations and the companies that you represent. We can do this, we must do this, and I, I look forward to working together with all of you in the time ahead.